Hey, how are you, Debbie? Hi, hi. Actually, I had a bag as well. You have a bag as well? Where yeah, let me, oh, thanks. Oh, here's your bag. There's some things I want to show you uh, to help maybe illustrate I, what 3D perfect. knitting is. Well, because that is my first question. What is 3D knitting that's like such a mysterious sounding <sighs> concept? Well, let me give let me give a little bit of context. Just uh, if I get again go back, you this know, we is, by the way, really comfortable. Yeah, thank you. That's 3D knit. That what you're sitting. This in. is insane. So, so there's okay. zero waste. We select the inputs. We actually did that in less than a day. From did this in less than a day. Yeah, did that in less than a day. We ideated it, selected the yarns. Actually, this is one of the yarns here. Um, it's all made of 100% recycled polyester. They're water bottle sourced from U.S. landfills. And in that, there's about 3,200 uh, 3, US, uh, or 3,200 water bottle stores from uh, landfills in the Midwest and the East Coast. So, you know. Okay, so what is 3D knitting? Yeah, well, uh, 3D knitting is, if I show you, it's this jacket that I'm wearing, it's these shoes, it's this hat, and it's, it's the ability to engineer a textile to shape with zero waste. So it's, you can do everything from select the fiber, and it's all, you know, you select the fiber, you then design it, as you saw in our, our customization model, right. um, and then you can create the whole product uh, in its entirety uh, uh, finished. Um, and, you know, you know, we met like four years ago, right, right before the pandemic. Right. And that's when I was first started, like, embarking on this whole journey of, you know, sustainable I didn't fashion. understand it then either. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll explain it. So that's why I took the, you know, I, I took, the, um, took over the family business in, you know, when I was 21. Uh, we started a ranch in 1937. And the whole thing was about, you know, it's always, we were always told to be good stewards of the land. Right. What can you do? you know, to pass this on along to the next generation. Right. And my brother and I are fourth generation, we'll pass it on to fifth. And at the time I started a uniform company, that uniform company uh, through, you know, kind of put me into uh, women's contemporary apparel. Uh, I had about 10,000 square feet in downtown LA. I and, remember that, right. Yeah, and I had that huge factory down there. And then slowly parts of that factory started getting filled with inventory, dead stock you know, waste, waste I tried to recycle, I couldn't recycle, right, that I ended up had to, having to throw away. Then I saw the true cost, and that was uh, a very big eye-opener to me. Right. So I sold the business to my partner, took the, all the machines, and wanted to start an on-demand, you know, sustainable fashion company. Did it with a good friend of mine. She was 39 at the time. Um, long of the shortage, she passed away very suddenly, and it gave me a very, gave me a perspective on time, and the impact I need to make and, do, and what I need to do quickly. Right. So I discovered these flatbed knitting machines when I tried to make sweaters. And when I was with the engineer in Asia, he said, you think sweaters is all you can make? Well, let me show you. Well, wait, and, wait, what's a vending machine? So like no, no, the, a 3D knitting machine. 3D knitting machine. So what, what does that even look like? And how to, and like, they're not like just hanging around everywhere, 3D knitting. No, they're, they're like industrial knitting machines. It's uh, in the video. Right. They're, uh, we, we are engineering one that we will offer with, that'll be much more affordable, that'll have the capabilities for, to allow anybody to enter into this industry. Okay. Um, but there are other machines out there. There are three major ones right now. And we are offering an alternative. And uh, they're, they make, currently most people know them for making garments, sweaters, primarily. Uh, other types of textiles, uh, but there are they're unique attributes to these machines which will, uh, that allow you to create three-dimensional textiles. So this shoe is 3D knit. And they're so right? cute. Yeah? Yeah, they're really <laughs> cute. Wendy, they're good for you and I. <laughs> uh, that chair, this, this jacket, this hat. So this is what a 3D knitted textile is, right? So you can create, you select, like I was saying earlier, you select the inputs, and you create the design, you create the actual physical product, and you can do this, like, you can do this, and it, at the moment it's very complicated, right? It takes years, sometimes decades, to master uh, the process of engineering a three-dimensional textile like this. But you look here, you can create this transition, and this is a machine that goes, as you saw in the video, goes left to right, and the fabric goes straight down. And, you know, as a junior knitwear engineer, uh, it could take you anywhere from uh, five to eight years to become somewhat proficient. To be a master network engineer could take you 20 plus, right? And there are very few of those in the industry. It's mainly, you know, it's really saturated with men and European men, right? And, and a big, big part of what we're trying to do is 
is uh, democratize this and open it up to everybody. Um, so let me show you a few other things, what 3D knitting is. Okay. This is a car seat. So, That's amazing. So I, I made a mini car seat, I mean, but I couldn't bring a big one. It's not like a baby car seat? It's not right a baby now. car seat. <laughs> <laughs> but, so you, within an hour's time, I can, I can scale this car seat up. I have the headrest here, right? And you know, nothing like show and tell, right? Oh my God, that's really so it. amazing. They Look, a little it. mini car seat. So this, is, um, this car seat is made up of uh, about 144 individual pieces that are cut and sewn. So you look at all our vehicles today, they're made of a you know, polyester type, right. uh, petroleum based leather like material. Right. 25% of that when you cut them and you assemble them, right. that goes to waste. It's typically offshore, it's somewhere overseas, exactly. not done here. This is done in three pieces, zero waste to shape. Wow. Who's and here? Then, Is there anybody from Toyota still here? There you are, Reginald. You're in the back. So, okay, we I'll have a it, whole conversation that put we that need next to, to have me. with this. But then when you say, okay, well, what can you do with that? Well, our customization platform allows you to create, these are just, this is what it looks like off the machine, right? So this is what a 3D knit textile looks like. It's all done. Oh, that's like off the machine. No sewing. I mean, the sewing is joining mean, like the back. This, like this, it just comes out like this? Yep, it just comes like out all like done? that. all done? All done. And you decide what you want and it comes out done. Yep, this that's is crazy. This is, this is the back, this is the base. Wow. All this, is, these, this is made from recycled inputs. So the beauty of, the beauty of 3D knitting, yeah. of 3D printing your own textiles, is that you can select the inputs you want either the recycled fibers. So you know, there's, there's, we all want to know transparently how our products are being right. made, who's making right. them, where they're being made. Right. You can do this. We're facilitating that. Are we there yet? No, but were we close? Very. Okay, so I, I have like yeah. a lot of, I'm not even looking there. I just have like, <laughs> a lot of questions. Yes. Um, so are these, is this one-offs? Like can you, yes. what's the, these are one-offs. Like you're doing essentially designer, pieces that are uniquely made or can you make hundreds if not thousands of the same thing? You can make one, you can make a thousand, you make a million. But you're only making it to people who want it when they need it for a certain use case. Right, so there's yeah. zero waste. Correct, there's zero waste because you're not making, you're not creating the inventory. There's zero waste because you're not cutting it. There is still an application of sewing or some, right. some form of assembly, but in some cases there isn't. Like this is a shoe. This is a very rough sample of a shoe. This whole thing, not like this shoe where there's actually two joints on it, yeah. the bottom and the top. I like that shoe though. <laughs> anyway, I like this shoe too. Uh -oh. It looks better than a rough sample of this one, but this is, this is incredible because, well, minus the laces, the whole thing comes off the machine in one piece. That is, that's nuts. Yeah. Okay, so we're going back to putting seats in all of um, Toyota's alternative <laughs> fuel cars. How can you scale millions of these? Like, how long would that take? And does the price go down tremendously if you're doing that many? Um, yes, I mean, it, it, it goes down, but you also have to, you also factor in too, this is how we onshore jobs, manufacturing, this, this type of like process back to the US, right? So you cut the carbon footprint, right? Because you're no longer producing. So all of this can happen in, in the States? Yes. It will happen wherever the factory is. So it happens either here in the States for Toyota. Right. It could happen in Japan. Right. It could happen in Europe. But it's all, it'll all be about, and what we're building in Malibu is, right. is a, uh, and that was very intentional too, by the way, but what we're building there is a knit lab with a small micro factory where we'll, we will actually will produce small, small, um, small quantities, but at volume, different types of projects from footwear to furniture to automotive interiors to whatever it is that, to medical braces. It just goes, the list goes on of what- Are you working with like designers to create collections? So we are gonna create our own to show, yeah. but yes, we will have a platform then of plugins. bring in designers. And then do you, like, would you make like a collection, but then if somebody orders it like online or whatever it is, like I want this shirt, how long would it take to get to me? So at the moment, it could take two weeks, right? So it's from not that much longer than like a normal, like you order something and you wait for it to be shipped over and then shipped over and then shipped over. Correct. Wow. Yeah. So actually this, talking about collection, this, this jacket, I did a whole collection for Pierre Carden. Mm -hmm. So right, right after I met you, I oh. flew to, uh, I got a call. Uh -huh. Pierre, Pierre and his uh, nephew Rodrigo wanted to do a uh, on demand, like the future of what fashion will be. Uh -huh. So we had a week to put together a whole collection put it together, wow. design it, wow. engineer it, right? Wow. 
photograph it, and I had to be in Paris at his office. And w when you have an opportunity like that. Right, right, you have to be in Paris. You say yes, yeah. you're like, okay, well, I'll figure it out. Right. So it was like a lot of the sleepless nights, but in one week we put together a full collection. This is only, I have a few pieces left because most of it's still in Paris with him. But this is, this is an example of the quality of wow. the products you can make. Wow. You know, there's, there is no, that's, that's what's so exciting about this. They're all the, the pieces of sustainability, you know, traceability, um, just in time manufacturing, onshoring, onshoring manufacturing here to the US, right. cutting that carbon footprint, right? right? Creating US and American jobs. Like, that is all a byproduct of this process. What we've done is, I think what Varian 3D has built and my team, I get to talk about it, right? Yeah. I, have a, I have a very smart team from interdisciplinaries that are not actually from knitting, and that's, I think, how we were able to disrupt it, because everyone told me, right. can't do it, it's impossible. It's is anybody possible. else doing this? No, not like this. No one's doing no. this? No, not like wow. this. Wow. So you, you can, if you want, program on, on the machine maker software, stitch by stitch, and you do it in 2D, and it'll take you, this was done in Germany, very similar seat, uh -huh. um, and it took six months for them to do it. Okay, so I processed this file in seven minutes. That's that's crazy. You saw it on, so yeah. a, a little bit of this, we usually don't show anybody, right? I have everyone sign an NDA, it's what we're working on with Intel, is you actually saw the machine file process in real time when, that, when it showed that visual model of it, and it spun around. So it actually was processing the file on the right-hand side, wow. that jagged little thing that you saw, that's the actual machine code. Wow. When you update it and create the designs, wow. it's doing it in real time, like this, on the program, and all you do is plug it in the machine, and out it comes. I, and to be honest, Debbie, I actually didn't, I wasn't quite sure if it was going to work. And two weeks ago, I had to be in Detroit to go meet with um, Isaac to show them this thing, and I, nothing like showing a sample. And two days before, I said, hey, let's just, we need a sample, I need to show something, because otherwise everyone's going to think we're kind of, right, right. we're all a bit of smoke and mirrors, right? Like yeah. everyone in this, uh, in this industry, it's a bit of smoke and mirrors, right? So my engineer said, oh God, I don't think I can do it, but anyways, he plugged it in, printed it out, boom, it came. I had it on the plane, like, wow. You know, and, and got to show them. So it's, it's really exciting. Now we're working on a, a, a footwear piece for a performance footwear shoe. Uh -huh. uh, we're going to work on uh, prosthetics uh, for amputees. Wow. There's so many things that we can, there's so many opportunities. And what I'm excited about is this is going to, our platform will allow anybody to enter into this space. That's it's the exciting. It's not proprietary. Not, it, so it is proprietary, but it's accessible. It'll be cheap. It'll be cloud-based. Wow. You don't need decades of education to right. learn how to do this. Right. And you, if I was just talking, you have someone, uh, you have two girls that are coming up. Yes. Or, and we were at lunch together and we we're talking and they have a yarn that they're, they're, right. they're out, uh, of, it's, uh, out um, of thin air. It's amazing. I right? know. Uh, but like that type of, there are so many technologies like that. That's incredible, right? But for them to be able to y access this platform right. and create something like this and show. Together. Yes. You, they can do it now wow. on their own. So, Girls, where are you? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, I, we're very excited. We're exchanging information. So that, oh the lunch God, was that's incredible. That's so good. You know, and we built, you know, we built the, the whole knit lab on the ranch. So it's 250 acres in the Santa Monica Mountains in Malibu in an old horse barn. Um, and it will be run off renewables, hopefully in the next year. Oh. And to prove that you can, if I can do it there, yeah. I could do it. You could do this anywhere. So the idea is, is it will set up micro factories all around the country. Right. So, okay, so are you looking to established uh, uh, fashion brands or, and or car companies or whatever it is to, to partner with them to have use their expertise in design, marketing, all that other stuff, and you work with them on specific collections of this? Is that what you're doing? Yes. That's, that's that, what, like, I would that, do. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. am I your partner now? <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Um, that, that, yes, that, that, that's how we bring this to scale, right? Is, yeah. is now that it's Because you don't have to sit and design everything when you've got incredible no. people who know how to do that. You've got this technology. Yes. You're, not, you're not creating fabric that is, you know, new fabric from, and, and more waste. So to me, this is like you can conquer the world with this, like with everything. You know what it is? I, 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 it's not that I, um, I, want, I want to change the world. Um, I want to change the world. And so I've read, the, I have this... No, it was amazing. Someone, someone told me this, and I can't, I can't remember where. And it was like, oh, you want to change the world, do you? Like, you know, the way to change the world. And I was like, oh, this is so good. It's like, you know, he said to me, he said, I'll stop trying to change it. Just do great work and let your work change the world. 
That's, and, that's really good. And I thought, wow, that's a great, like, that's really a good. great, um, so that's what we want to do is we're just doing great work and we want to democratize it and we want right. to give access to everybody because at the moment it's not accessible, right? Is, it's a very inaccessible industry. Right. Is this, do you think this is going to overtake the traditional way of producing textiles? Is this the future? This is the future. Like the future is here, right? It's just, right. it's not, at the moment it's not at, uh, it's not at scale. Right. The future is, the beauty is there's two, I mean, there are two major knitwear manufacturers, fa ma two major knitwear factories really here in the U.S. right now. Biggest and most modern one is in St. Louis, and it's 33 machines. That's not, there's opportunity, right. I think, when you see. Is it anywhere else around the world? Yes, there are. Asia, there are a lot. They do a lot of manufacturing there, but it's not true 3D knitting. There's also issues with uh, um, IP. Yeah. There's also issues with carbon footprint. We, we can see supply chain issues right now. You no longer have to make thousands of yards wait a year when you design a textile, right? You can do it. Our goal, what success looks like for me in a year, is that Debbie, you'll be sitting on a beach in Hawaii sipping a pina colada, because I think that tastes like vacation. Yeah. <laughs> and you will be on your iPad and you'll design your own custom shoe just the way you want. Right. You'll push purchase, it'll send it to a partner factory, it'll print it, it'll be at your house when you get home. That, that is success. Wow, I, I said wow like thousands of times right yeah. now. Um, this is, no, but this is amazing and this is, it's, it actually feels like, like it's possible. It is, it, it is, and it, it is, we're doing it, we're, we're creating, we're, we're seeking partnerships right now to build this thing out. And, and it's all about, and the big thing is we have a bunch of patents around this, um, primarily because I want to protect what we're doing, right. but because I also don't want any one big conglomerate or corporation to take it and say, I'm going to hold it and well, keep everybody the, out. Right, that's the way so. to go. What is, what, how does your omission factor in with women in prison? Ah, so thank nice. you. So that, that's a big, um, so I have, a, um, I have a board member, uh, a couple of board members, they're, uh, they've challenged me about a year ago and they said, hey, Garrett, I've noticed that the landscape in this industry is heavily male dominated. They're, you know, um, I, I would like to see you change that. I want to see diversity, you know, and, and, and I think that's, I also want to, want to, wanted to see and want to see diversity in this. So I uh, partnered up with Cal PIA. Okay. Uh, the pris uh, they run all of the uh, re-education uh, and uh, uh, prisoner like um, educate, uh, uh, training programs within uh, California. So I was just at Chino about a month ago talking with the warden and the goal is that by 2023 they'll have the first set of machines and we'll train women, the women. While there, they're in prison. While they're in prison. They will, wow. they will learn how to maintain and service these machines, right? Yeah. And they will then, they'll get an accreditation, which we're working on right now. Huh. Then they will learn how to engineer and program them. I'm gonna work, the goal is, is that, and I told the ward, I want them to do interesting projects like these so they can leave with a portfolio of products that they know how to make and engineer on this platform. They either, when they leave, yeah. can, and by the way, they're gonna get paid uh, a, a salary or a wage that the EDD will dis d determine uh -huh. uh, uh, while they're in prison. So it'll pay for uh, it'll pay for in their incarceration. It'll pay for uh, they'll create a savings account for them. It'll uh, which will help them get an apartment when they leave. Uh, a little bit of money this in the bank, great. a car. You know all those things that you need. But it'll give them a skill set for an industry, a new industry that's coming out. You know that will come out of like which will take a population of women that yeah. are that have a desire and a want and need. Right and we'll retrain them. So just to give you context, the entry level job for a machine like mechanic to engineer these, or to maintain these machines is between 60 and $70,000 a year. You wanna be a knitwear engineer, yeah. it's between 100, and if you're a master knitwear engineer, you go up to $250,000 a year. So these women will now not only, they will work for the companies, my, my dream is that these, yeah. these women will work for the companies, the Nikes, the Adidas. Yeah, yeah. They'll work for the Teslas, the Toyotas, the, you know, the Raytheons, the Boeings of the world and they will really build, they'll be the backbone of manufacturing here in the U.S. You know, interestingly, what sticks, were, were you here for the, for the um, conversation, the, one of the Toyota conversations yesterday? Um, mm. we, have, we have a, a good friend of ours who was on the panel, and he was talking about in lower income communities like mm. Watts, mm -hmm. people are looking for careers yes. and not jobs. And this could be something in addition to that where you go into communities like that, train them for these incredible careers. Yes. And that's something that I, you know, like we could help you do that, 
Like, I, I would love, I would. Doesn't that make sense? It makes, uh, makes more than sense. Be it's the right thing and that's what we should do. But also, yeah. you don't need them to have a certain degree to no, do this. No, you don't. So you can go to places where people who are looking for a future and in a career yes. and teach them something that is definitely like here today, but sounds like tomorrow. It is. It is, it is, it is, it is here today at scale will be tomorrow. And tomorrow is not like some dream 10 years down the yeah. road, you know, far, far away. It's yeah. like, we're not going, no, we can solve this in a, in a few years very quickly. Wow. And so there's another part. So after these like women and the women in prison take, have the skill set, there's also, there's a, a, a secondary team of uh, people we're partnering with like uh, there it's a, a charity called five keys where they'll help place them into these jobs I, my goal with creating accessible machines is that i hope is that the, the, they will be entrepreneurial and want to set up their own mini factories and be able to onboard and take on all these different projects it's just a data file so during covid i made um or not me i our company we did uh, we produced 150,000 3 d knit masks um, masks that were with yeah. three different, you know, three different varieties of uh -huh. them. And we emailed those files to factories uh, from St. Louis to LA, right? And they produced and shipped, they shipped to Incredible. us. We, yeah. Incredible. Oh my God, guys, <laughs> this is amazing. Well, I'm, I'm, in, I'm so inspired by this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I kind of feel like everybody is going to have questions, but I'm going to say we have, uh, we have a 15 minute break coming up right now. I want every single one of you to accost him uh. and make deals. <laughs> so that's your homework for the break. But Garrett, thank you so much. This you're, is amazing. You're welcome. Amazing. Thank you. All just, right. And for the oddness of why the cone's here, just so you know, this is, this is the output of what we use to make these products, right? So this is what it, what, what, and this is about, uh, uh, this is about, I think 500 uh, water bottles from U.S. landfills in this, right? And look at how, and, and then look at what you can make from it. So it's incredible. Yeah. I know. Oh, wait, we're on Spaceship Earth. We got to do wow. something, right? We got to. Thank you so much. Thanks. Oh. Oh yeah.